G'day everyone, right here I have a blow-off valve and I have a recirculation valve. What are these items, how do they work, and what is the difference between the two? Let's have a look. Okay, well other than sounding fully sick, like they do in this video where I fitted them to my car, The blow valve and the recirc valve perform a very basic function and that function is to protect the turbocharger and keep it spooling when we close the throttle or when we change gear. So how do these protect the turbocharger? Well effectively the turbocharger is making as much boost as we require of it and this boost is traveling between the turbocharger and the intake side of the engine. That entire system is pressurized with boost. Now, when we close the throttle, i.e. we change gear or we slow the vehicle down, we create a brick wall where that boost pressure can no longer go and be consumed by the engine. That air pressure returns back towards the turbocharger, which is still spinning and still making a little bit of boost. And it tries to force its way back out through the compressor wheel and back into the intake side of the turbo because it needs to go somewhere. We've got quite a lot of boost pressure. The turbo is still forcing air. That air needs to go somewhere. And what we do with the blower valve is we release that air to atmosphere. The recirc valve, we release that air back into the intake side of the turbo and it goes around and round until we open the butterfly again and start consuming the air that we've created. So how do these two items operate? Well, we see on the top here, we have a small nipple. Now we create a vacuum on that nipple when we shut the throttle. So that is connected to the intake side of the engine after the throttle body. When we shut the throttle body, we create a vacuum between the engine and the intake plenum, and that vacuum is also applied on this nipple. That vacuum will retract this cylinder inside here. We've also got pressure on this side helping that, and all the air coming out through here will be released to atmosphere. The recirc valve is much the same. We have a vacuum nipple on the top. We have air pressure coming in the bottom there. The air pressure and the vacuum assist the piston to travel up, and that air is released back into the intake side of the turbo. Now, of course, it's important to mention that the blow valve and recirc valve are not to be confused with the wastegate on the turbocharger. In this video here, I do go through how the wastegate works on the turbocharger, but they do perform completely different functions in the system. Okay, so when it comes to these two, which one is better? Now, I don't necessarily think either is better than the other. The OEM tends to prefer the recirc valves. They're much quieter. We're recirculating the air back into the engine. We're not releasing it to atmosphere, which is a bit of a no-no environmentally speaking. And in my case, if you have a MAF sensor, a recirc valve is a better idea because the MAF sensor is gonna measure how much air comes into the intake side of the turbo. If we go ahead and blow that off to atmosphere, the MAF sensor is not gonna know how much fuel to put in the engine. We tend to overfuel an engine if we have a blow off valve to atmosphere because the MAF's measuring how much air comes in, it's assuming how much fuel we need, and then we go ahead and blow a heap of air off. Of course, we're gonna overfuel most of the time when we change gear. Of course, on the other hand, blow off valves are jolly cool. Uh, they come in many different so sounds and sizes and different designs, and it is a much cooler looking design than one of these. These are also adjustable. So if we wish to blow off later, we wish to have much more boost into this system before it blows off, we can actually turn this and we can adjust how hard it opens and how late it opens, or we can adjust it so it's soft as well. So the adjustable aftermarket options for these is much cooler. Of course, on the other side of things, we have hybrid systems as well, where basically we can have some air getting recirculated and some is being blown off. We can adjust how much that we want to blow off and how much we want to keep in the engine system. The particular ones I fitted to my car are a hybrid system and I can choose just how much air I actually want to release the atmosphere so you can get the sound without having too many overfueling issues. Now the research side of things is totally sealed and I cannot pull it apart, but this particular one, we can pull it apart. If we take this screw out, there we go. There's quite a large spring in there and we have a piston inside. Now this is uh, something we can pull apart and we can maintain, we can clean it up and we can re-grease where we need to. We can put a heavier spring in it if we wish to open much more aggressively and much later. And of course we have the adjustment here. We can pull it apart and we can clean it. Internally, that's how it looks. There's not much really going on. It's quite a simple system. There is four parts and there is literally one moving part. Okay, so what happens if we decide we don't want either of these and we want to run no relief valve on the entire system? And of course we can do this, but it usually 
ends up bad for the turbocharger. What tends to happen is when we close the throttle, we'll end up with a surge of air coming back towards the compressor wheel and the compressor wheel will tend to be stalled by it. It will slow down and as that air travels back out through the intake side of the turbo, the wheel will start to move backwards and forwards like this. It will thrust against the inside of the housing and against the thrust washer. More and more of this, it'll wear out the turbocharger. It does sound cool, compressor surge, but it is not good for the turbocharger. And when it stalls the turbocharger, it's not good for creating boost for the next gear change. The turbocharger wants to keep spinning, and that is good for us if we can keep it turning using a relief valve in the system. Like I said, of course, we can run one without a relief valve, but it is best too for the turbo and for the performance of the vehicle. Now, of course, all of this is aimed at petrol cars with a throttle body. There are some diesels out there that have a throttle body. My Hilux is actually one of them, but the throttle body performs a different function. The idea of the throttle body in a car like that, it is fully shut when the car is off, it opens halfway when you turn the key on to start the engine, and then it's fully open for the rest of the time. It may shut slightly to assist the EGR creating some vacuum to suck the exhaust gas back into the intake system, and it is fully shut when we turn the key off to stop the car dieseling when you turn it off. It turns off much more smoothly if we have a flap covering the intake but it's not a throttle body in the same sense that these are. A diesel is entirely governed by how much fuel we put in and they want maximum air all the time. A throttle body in that instance is always open when the vehicle is operating unless the EGR is performing its function or we're shutting it down. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the blow-off valves and recirc valves. It is definitely a preference on how you like to operate a vehicle and how you like your vehicle to sound. Of course, if you ever replace a recirc valve with a blow-off valve, if you keep these, you can put them straight back on. There's no modification needed. You can just bolt it straight on. You never know you're in there. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.